Dr. Daphne, would you like to turn on your screen? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so that's great. It's 7 p.m. and we are live. A very good evening to our fellow audience in Zoom and Facebook Live. I'm Hazel from Dr. Accidentist, and you are very welcome to today's session titled When Your Screen is Killing Your Eyesight, Eye Health in a Digital Age. So Dr. Extentis is Singapore's largest health platform in the increasing the accessibility of credible health information and through our health content we hope to help you guys to make an informed decision on anything health related. So I'm very happy to be joined by our panelists for today, um, ophthalmologist Dr. Daphne Han. Hello Dr. Daphne. Hi, hi Hazel, hi everyone. Hello. So also, we are very excited to announce that today's webinar is in partnership with BenQ, your, your brand of choice for technological products that takes into account both your enjoyment as well as your health. So we're going to explore more on this um, later. So before I properly introduce our panelists, I'm just going to quickly run through some general housekeeping. So first off, we are recording today's webinar and you will be able to find it on our Facebook page, Dr. Extentis, for you to revisit after the webinar. But if you're lazy to search it up, we will also be sending you the link to this recording in our um, post-webinar EDM. So stay tuned for that. It will probably come tomorrow. So secondly, we will be having a live Q&A with Dr. Daphne towards the end of the webinar. So throughout our conversation, please feel free to use the Q&A function in Zoom. And for our Facebook Live audience, you can leave your um, questions in the comment box down below. So we do hope that we will have um, time to get to all of the questions, but it's very, very hard to judge in advance. So if there's any questions that we didn't manage to get to, you can always drop your questions at our west, uh, website, drextentis.com. And lastly, since today's webinar is on eye health, um, we have an exciting lucky draw where you can win a BenQ eye care monitor worth $269 when you complete a survey today. On top of that, um, completing the survey will automatically allow you to claim a complimentary Lazada discount voucher. So I'll leave the link um, to the survey in the chat box very, very quickly. Just give me a moment. Uh, sorry, not q and Chat to attendees. Okay, so I've dropped the, the uh, instructions for you to redeem the, uh, the Lazada voucher. So that's all for housekeeping. Um, before we get started, let's probably meet our panelists. I'm very happy to introduce to you Dr. Daphne Han. Dr. Daphne is a senior consultant in Singapore Medical Specialist Center and has been in ophthalmology practice since 1999. She's a key opinion leader and consultant for several lenses and laser companies and is often invited to share her professional experience. Dr. Daphne, would you like to kick things off by introducing yourself as well as the work you do? Well, I'm an eye doctor and a surgeon, so um, I see patients from all walks of life who have um, eye problems, uh, blurring, irritation, eye pain, etc. And I um, try my best to fix them. And um, yeah, and that can be through, uh, well, you know, conservative methods like uh, using medications, eye drops. Um, you know, uh, also, um, you know, I sometimes use very sophisticated uh, machines like lasers and uh, dancers um, to improve the eyesight of my patients. Just today, um, you know, we had a laser uh, operating theater uh, and we did a LASIK for a gentleman who had, um, you know, pretty high eye power who uh, made him, you know, well, see quite blurred most of the time. So yeah, that's what I do. Um, yeah, day in, day out, and I enjoy it. <laughs> Dr. Daphne is an expert in the eye area. She will definitely be able to give us good tips today. So moving on to today's topic on eye health, it's an extremely relevant um, topic considering how work from home and work and home-based learning is slowly becoming a norm due to the pandemic, of course. We are on our computers and mobile phones more often than usual. And when we work from home, the day kind of blurs together and it's very hard to impose digital boundaries. So you can work all the way into the night without even realizing that you are working for so long on the computer. So um, we will just work in, um, but excessive screen time comes at the expense of our eye health. So in today's webinar, we'll be exploring this topic in detail together with Dr. Han. So to start off, um, Dr. Han, we'll ask you a more personal question regarding, um, have you ever noticed any changes ever since COVID um, in terms of the types of patient that has been coming in since COVID happened? Well, COVID um, has its pros and cons for the eye. Um, during the circuit breaker, we, you know, obviously saw, you know, uh, much 
fewer patients, but those who came in all had very severe problems. Um, and, you know, they can be like practically blinded by, you know, very um, basically serious issues that should have been uh, noticed uh, way before. And um, of course, you know, uh, there are quite a lot of people who spend you know, all their time on the computer during the circuit breaker. And thereafter, you know, the, I think still a significant number of people are working from home. And, um, you know, from what I observe, um, those who get uh, issues with um, digital eye strain and uh, dry eye syndrome may be uh, slightly uh, increased as well. Yeah. Hmm. But on the, you know, uh, upside, we see less uh, infections. Um, well, you know, uh, that's kind of good because there's less flu because everyone is wearing, you know, masks. And yeah, flu, like the adenoviral flu bug, um, virus, you know, sometimes can cause red eye as well, conjunctivitis. So we see a bit less of that. Yeah. So the mask do help, like prevent that, like infections. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the general practitioners, family doctors, will tell you that they're seeing less coughs and colds. You know, uh, less flu. Yeah, since the you know uh, pandemic started. So that's the upside of it. <laughs> that's good. First health message: please wear your mask. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move on. Um, actually, Dr. Daphne has prepared a presentation for us where we'll really go in-depth to explore the different um, eye health aspects that we should take into account when considering our eye health. So, Dr. Daphne, you can start sharing your screen. Now, I would like to remind our audience in Zoom and Facebook Live, you can ask questions. Um, you can ask questions in the um, chat function, uh, the Q&A function, sorry, in Zoom. And for Facebook Live, please leave your questions in the... Comment down, uh, comment box down below. So, Doctor Daphne, if you are ready, you can start whenever you want. Yeah. Okay. The stage is yours. So yeah, so we're well wanting to talk about how um, excess uh, screen time or excessive screen time may be detrimental, may be bad for our eyesight, and uh, it's something that is so prevalent, so common nowadays. Even, you know, the young kids are well, spending well, a significant amount of time on digital devices and that, um, you know, will include devices such as computers, uh, laptops, tablets, as well as smartphones. So um, I dug a little into the statistics of how much uh, people are, how much time people are spending on their digital devices for this very short talk. And uh, these are some of the points that I gathered, um, you know, through my little research. And apparently by the age of three years old, 68% of children regularly use a computer. And these data, the you know, and next few points as well, are actually from a couple of years ago, as um, early as about 2016, 2017. So imagine 2020, the number of laptops, you know, um, you are, you know uh, tablets as well as uh, uh, smartphones that have been flying off the shelves. Um, I well, will guess that the uh, percentage is in fact higher than that. And, you know, in places that's more cosmopolitan like Singapore, we're probably seeing maybe, you know, oh, well, I will guess 80, 90% of children regularly using a digital device. So, okay, how about the adults? On average, in UK, this research, this particular survey that I came across, uh, you know, found that on average, in UK, adults spend four hours, 45 minutes daily using digital media. And digital media means uh, internet, you know. Um, so, with the net, you're Googling, and that's just the net alone. And that's, you know, doesn't, you know, uh, take into account perhaps uh, time spent on non-internet, um, you know, well, uh, well, work on the digital devices, like maybe just, you know, preparing a talk or reading, you know, certain articles, etc. So, and in Singapore, how about in Singapore? Wow, the research, you know, showed this crazier, it's even more. In 2017 alone, adults in Singapore, on average, spend 12 hours 42 minutes. That is like, well, there's only 24 hours in a day. That's like half a day. Half a day, you're walking. Well, okay, I, I'm, I got to say I'm guilty of that too. Walking and staring at the phone, 
um, sitting down, chewing your, you know, well, maybe lunch <laughs> and have an eye on your, you know, iPad. Yeah. Um, plenty of people do that. But, you know, lest you think that it's only in the younger people, even the older age groups, even the elderly is older than 75 years old, that proportion of, you know, the population are also using more digital devices and being on the internet more. And to be on the internet, you've got to be using, you know, some of these devices um, anyway. So just that alone, up to 77%. So it is a fact we are spending more and more time on the digital devices. As I looked at my iPhone, which constantly analyzes how much time I spend, if you are using an iPhone, I'm not sure, you know, um, other smartphones, whether they have that too, but you know, many of them track how much time you spend and sometimes even analyze how much time you spend on what category of activity on your phones. You know, I myself, I spend about three hours on average, three to four hours on average, using my iPhone and the most amount of time is on WhatsApp. So, you know, um, that's how we're communicating nowadays. So with that comes, well, overuse perhaps of our eyes. What do we, you know, use? Which part of our body do we use? Which sensory organ do we use to you know, perceive the messages that's coming from all these digital devices? It's our eyes. Well, it's um, good if you tell me that I listen to or you listen to you know, music um, half the time, but the fact is that to receive a message, uh, be it WhatsApp, you know, or you know, the SMS, you're going to use your eyes to read that. You're going to use your eyes to read the tiny little prints for your email on your smartphones, and even for the laptops and desktops. Sometimes, um, when things get busy, you may have multiple um, you know, applications uh, switched on at the same time. Um, lots of information going through your eye as the sensory organ, like a very busy camera trying to snap pictures every single second of the time. So there's this phenomenon called digital eye strain that can result from all this overuse of your eyes. So what is digital eye strain? We'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. But in uh, 2016, again, that's a couple of years ago, well, I expect that number to be higher now. So in the US, they did a study and that showed that more than 50%, so 65% of the population had self-reported symptoms of this thing called digital eye strain. And more females than males reported these symptoms. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, particularly, you know, symptoms of dry eyes, which is, which is part of the digital eye strain. And, um, of course, you know, uh, if you use more than one device, you're probably more likely to suffer from all these eye strain problems. And true enough, this is what the study found back then. And, uh, you know, uh, no surprise, these symptoms were found to be more in contact lens wearers partly because contact lens wearers tend to have drier eyes. So what is digital eye strain exactly? So when you get digital eye strain after spending a lot of time, you know, staring at the iPhone, playing games or whatever. So some of the symptoms that you may get are eye strain, tired, tired eyes, you know, can't focus so well, can shift your focus from far to near or near to far quick enough. So that's what eye strain generally mean. Neck and shoulder or even back pain. So this is something that is pretty serious. So between the eye strain and, you know, your muscular skeletal system, your neck, shoulder, all the muscles as well as the bony structures causing pain and discomfort because of most likely some malalignment, improper alignment, not in the right shape because you're bending over, especially if you're using a, you know, handheld device, you know, uh, postural issues, that's up to one third of the people. And uh, apart from eye strain, one third of people get, uh, people get that and the neck, shoulder, back pain, one third of people get that too. Headache, blurred vision and dry eyes are also involved in the symptoms that are reported, uh, you know, for digital eye strain. So, well, if you break it down, this 
problem of visual eye strain uh, basically um, well this problem is divided into two main categories of symptoms so the internal symptoms that are due to uh, fatigue so tiredness of your eye focusing muscles so we have two eyes and they have to work together and you know focus at the same spot to give you single vision if they don't work together you may sometimes get double vision even you know some people who get you know who are born with squints or who develop squints later on or in enlargement of their squints may get double vision particularly when they are tired so accommodative stress as well as binocular vision stress is what these internal uh, digital eye strain symptoms uh, are associated with so blurred at near blurred at far after digital use difficulty refocusing from one distance to another these are all so-called the internal symptoms that are uh, under this big umbrella of digital eye strain how about external symptoms? If we are spending a lot of time staring at a particular gadget, of course, our eyes are not rested. They're open all the time and uh, almost all the time that is, and they will dry out. In general, it is estimated that about 50% of computer users versus only up to 30 odd percent of the general population get dry eyes. So the more you use the digital devices, the more likely you are to get dry eyes. And why is that? So let me show you uh, in a while. So do you think that you may have digital eye strain? Perhaps you're staring at your tiny phone, um, you know, looking, well, maybe just listening. I mean, I, I like this sort of our webinar because a lot of time we are talking so you know you're using your ears you know uh, maybe not so much your eyes but um, how do you know if you have digital eye strain you can do a pretty objective questionnaire ask yourself some questions um, I have you know uh, on the screen here this little questionnaire that you can actually find um, you know online yeah I think it's called the computer vision uh, for, uh, for uh, symptoms um, uh, questionnaire so and you can just ask yourself whether you know you get blurred vision when you're looking at the computer screen and you rate yourself from none which is zero to you know, 10 which is uh, very very uh, severe very serious blurred vision when looking in the distance difficulty slowness in focusing eyes from one distance to another so these are the internal symptoms and then the external symptoms like irritation or sensation of burning of the eyes uh, related to dry eyes you know uh, you know, sometimes uh, also eye strain, this is a bit subjective. Headache, sensitivity to bright lights and dis discomfort in your eyes. So this score, you can total it up and uh, you will, uh, if you score high, that means you know what well, you're likely to be getting all these side effects from spending too much time on the digital devices. So how do we prevent this problem of the digital eye strain? Well, first and foremost, to me, um, you know, what is the most crucial is, well, your uh, posture. That is one um, fact that obviously will affect not just your vision, but also your musculoskeletal uh, system. So your back, your neck and all that. You don't want to forget about your posture while you're spending so much time on the computer because you know after many years of such uh, behavior you know the consequences can be very disastrous there is a condition called kyphosis which is bent back you know or hump back the hump back of notre dame you know these people maybe there is some you know genetic factors to it but you know, postural uh well problems often will cause it to be more severe. So be aware of proper positioning of your device. Most of the time, the smaller the device is, the likelier you know, uh, that you are to bring them closer to you. But in general, if it is a, uh, say, you know, iPad, you should be holding it at about 40 cm. And if it is, you know, laptop, about 50 cm, or, you know, it's, it's a desktop, it's, you know, it can be even further away from you. And uh, height of the uh, device is very important. If you're all curled up, 
in the sofa, then, you know, with your back bent, um, you, you know, legs are up high, you know, then uh, you're not going to, you know, be very kind to your well, uh, back. And, uh, you know, you may you know, get, uh, as a consequence, lots of problems with your, you know, back ache, etc. So sitting down at a desktop is actually one of the best posture that you can adopt for using a digital device. In that way, you know, you are, well, basically using your core muscles um, rather than, you know, lying down, etc. So shoulders level to the screen, preferably a monitor knees at the right angle and feet flat on the floor. This is particularly, you know, encouraged for students. Of course, students will do that when they are at school, when they are at home. Uh, if you have a monitor set up for them, they're more likely to uh, keep a good posture as well. So the monitor should be at or near eye level. It shouldn't be too high either because if it's too high, then you may be looking up too much and that can contribute to dry eyes. All right. So Posture aside, which to me is one of the most important because, you know, it dictates, you know, how your uh, skeletal system is going to turn out as you age. Yeah, so that's to me very important. What about the other factors that can, um, well, contribute to digital eye strain? What can we do to prevent them? So refractive errors, having improper eye power, particularly aesthetic astigmatism in Chinese it's called san kuang so not just your short uh, long side a lot of us uh, have astigmatism that can be significantly high so uh, any of these refractive errors that are uncorrected may contribute to digital eye strain so particularly astigmatism and presbyopia which is lao hua because at the near distance you know the lao hua or presbyopia will make the uh, vision poorer so to correct refractive errors, what should we do? We should obviously wear proper glasses and not just proper glasses, but also regularly updated glasses because glasses being a physical thing that is, you know, prone to wear and tear, you know, uh, being bent or if you, you know, uh, well, wear them uh, every day, which is what a lot of people do, they may become loose over time, the screws need to be tightened, etc. You need to check the position of the glasses and you need to check the power of the lenses to see whether they still fit your eyes because through our life, our eye power may change unless you fix them with, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, a lens implant or whatever. Uh, presbyopia, lao hua, may increase as we get older. Astigmatism may also shift as we get older. So all that need to be regularly checked. So if you are wearing proper glasses or if your eye power is neutralized properly by, you know, perhaps a, a laser or, or, or uh, you know, lens surgery, you will be more comfortable looking at the screen for a longer period of time and you will also reduce squinting. People who are not uh, having their eye power corrected properly or who have significant eye power may be squinting to see better and that can actually cause them to blink less and also to blink incompletely. So these are actually scientifically proven. So if you want to improve and not to get so much strain from using digital devices, don't squint. The more you squint, you're going to get more dry eyes. Don't squint, try to wear the correct power or if you hate, you know, having to change glasses all the time, you know, well, feel free to get your eyes checked for a more permanent solution. So apparently even half a diopter, so 50 degree of aesthetic can reduce your visual comfort. So make sure to correct your astigmatism. And some research has also shown that up to about one to 200 degrees of aesthetic can increase your task errors by 370%, that's a huge number, and therefore reduce your productivity. If you can't see clearly, of course, you may, you know, commit errors while you're, I don't know, you know, counting the, you know, uh, finances, you know, if you're an accountant, that can be very, very bad for your job. Remember to rest your eyes every 20 minutes for 20 seconds by looking at a distant object of 20 feet away. That's the 20-20-20 rule. That helps to relax your accommodation as well as to 
uh, improve your blinking, which will help to reduce dry eyes. And also, you know, highly important now that, you know, we're in this age when, you know, uh, material things are well everywhere and so much uh, in terms of variety, you can choose a digital device that is kinder to your eyes and that what are these uh, devices that are kinder to our eyes that has got, they, they need to have a low flicker rate and high contrast as well as appropriate lighting. So, and uh, so that, you know, we'll come back to that because, you know, lots of uh, monitors and devices out there have that, but, you know, uh, our sponsor, BenQ today has also shown us one of the, you know, uh, best choices that we can get in the market. So how about dry eye management? This is something that I do regularly, almost every day, manage my patient's dry eyes. First of all, to manage dry eyes coming from uh, problems such as digital eye strain, we need to analyze it. What type of dry eyes? Is it because spending too much time on the computer? Most likely it is. And what happens when you're spending too much time on, on these uh, devices? So we do an analysis first and the way we do this in the clinic nowadays uh, that can be quite uh, you know sophisticated gadgets so in uh, our clinic we use a uh, device called the lippy view to help us analyze the tear film in our eyes to see whether the dry eyes is due to too much evaporation too little water intake uh, not enough, you know, uh, dietary intake of good quality oil or not blinking enough or having incomplete blinks. So this thing about partial blinks. So a quick, like a 20 second scan can tell us a lot about what's going on in your life that is affecting your dry eyes. Treatment wise, it's a step wise approach. We start with, uh, you know, very simple moisturizing eye drops, which can be sometimes bought over the counter as well. And, uh, you know, uh, stepping up, you can use thicker things like gel and cream. You can also go for medicated eye drops. We, I like to prescribe this eye drop called eye curvis in my clinic, and that helps to reduce the inflammation and allergy that comes with dry eyes. And, uh, you know, uh, further than that, we also give oral treatment, omega-3 fatty acid. You can get that over the counter as well. And eyelid hygiene, cleansing of the eyelids is very important. You can be surprised how much, you know, eye makeup ladies, or I don't know, maybe men too, put on their eyes nowadays, and that can clog up the pores and the oil glands and cause dry eyes uh, indirectly. So apart from all this at-home treatment, which, which, which patients can do uh, daily, in clinic treatment, there are quite a few as well that you can consider for dry eye treatment. Uh, uh, the simplest one will be a collagen plug. It's something like, you know, a collagen injection into the tear apparatus. So we try to plug and keep the moisture in the eyes rather than drain away to the nose. Uh, we can also cleanse the, you know, uh, oily glands of the eyelids professionally, and that helps to improve the tear film, and the oily layer of the, of the tear film will become healthier. Um, other clinics uh, offer intense pulse light to the lower eyelids, and that can stimulate the oil glands and uh, make them more regulated. And uh, I generally uh, shy away from, I try not to do this because in pigmented uh, people, so people with darker skin, that may actually cause some problems uh, of uh, bleaching of their skin. So be careful about uh, the IPL treatment. Um, a treatment that we tried uh, recently is called Tixel. It's a, you know, basically heat treatment, a, a very high heat for a very short duration of time. Uh, we found that it was quite effective. So this is something that is done kind of like periodically every couple of weeks, uh, you know, for the start. And uh, it's quite effective, helps the dry eyes quite significantly. But uh, downside is that it's, uh, well, a little bit painful to some for those with uh, very fine skin. And right now we've embarked on lippy flow treatment and this is a little bit like a massage to the eyelids. So you can see here this picture at the bottom, this lady here is having the lippy flow treatment. So it will be massaging with heat as well to improve the oil gland function of the eyes. Okay, last but not least, this is kind of like my second last slide. Choose the right device. So if you know, talked about dry eye, which is the external part of digital eye strain. 
How about the internal part, accommodation, stress, binocular vision, stress, you're using your eyes and then your eye muscles are focused at the near distance and it's actually eye muscles that's doing that in the uh, area called the ciliary body. And it's, you know, an analogy, I can compare it to basically holding weights. Your ciliary muscles, your accommodation or focusing muscles are holding some dumbbells to keep you focused at that distance. And if you are spending 12 hours staring at your devices, your eye muscles would be holding these dumbbells for 12 hours. If you are holding these dumbbells in your arm for 12 hours, what do you think your arms would be like? I tell you, mine would be jelly, right? <laughs> so, okay, how to help with that? Of course, taking, you know, frequent breaks is very important. And if you can't be staring out the window every 20 minutes, what else can you do, you know? You can try to remind yourself to blink more. So there's such a thing called blink training. It's a thing, it's a thing, all right? You train yourself to blink. Now, let me tell you, the normal blinking rate for normal people who are not staring at any device is about every two to four seconds. So you count. Every three seconds, you're supposed to blink. Normally, that's what you're supposed to do, okay? You are made that way, okay? But if you're looking at something like an electronic display, that blinking rate goes down to one blink every eight to 15 seconds. So between these blinks, hopefully they're complete blinks, between these blinks, your eyes may dry out. So the more frequent you blink, the more you're moisturizing your eyes, all right? So um, if you're reading from a computer monitor, somehow, because perhaps it's larger, you are more likely to blink completely, apparently, compared to a tablet. Perhaps it's the tablet's um, contrast, you know, the um, you know, uh, background lighting or just the general size that maybe captivates people more. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, the, the well, details of this you know, had not been actually uh, made known. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you're staring at a tablet or a phone, you're more likely to blink incompletely. So if you're staring at a monitor on a computer, you're more likely to blink completely. So that's a fact. And, uh, well, if you choose the right device, you may be able to adjust your seating position to make it more proper. So if you can adjust your monitor height to suit your sitting position, that's going to put that's going to put you in a far better position than somebody who's stuck to a you know fixed position and then you're having to lower your neck, etc. And that's going to be very unkind to your body. So ensure also proper display brightness. The you know background illumination brightness of your screen is important because if it is too bright uh, when you know your surrounding, your ambient lighting is dim, your eyes are going to perceive that as glare and discomfort, and then that's going to cause a digital eye strain. So your ambient lighting should somehow uh, be matched to your monitor lighting and, and vice versa. There's some, you know, debates about that. Some people say, oh, you know, when it's dark, you know, you really want to constrict your pupils. But um, in general, if you're talking about comfort level, uh, if your monitor, if your, if your room is, you know, bright, your monitor should be bright as well. Um, and if your room is dim, your monitor, you know, brightness should be dim too. Okay, and of course, remember to rest well. Um, and how to rest well, you should try to reduce blue light exposure, uh, which may cause problems with sleep. So certain monitors have this inbuilt blue light uh, well, uh, control, um, and then that uh, will likely result in better sleep quality. So all these are uh, some of the features that the BenQ monitor that I have behind me right now, yeah, have in it. And I'm very, you know, happy to be using this monitor. 
Um, I haven't used it for very long, but you know, I can show you later how it works. All right, so that's my last slide. And uh, this is my clinic just outside of where I'm sitting right now is how it looks like. It's 8 p.m. So that's just me and my one colleague here. <laughs> hey, over to you, Hazel. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Daphne. You want to stop sharing your screen? Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me put hmm. that away. And uh, did it stop? I don't think so. Let me just open this. Yep. Can I? Has it stopped yet? No, not yet. <laughs> let me see. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Anyway, just now you were saying that your screen time was three to four hours, is it? On your iPhone? Yes, on my iPhone. Yeah. I went to check mine because I was curious, like what my screen yeah. time is. Yes. And you said, um, my screen time is 10, hour, 10 and a half hours. Was and that then, your phone? Was that your phone? Your smartphone? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will tell you how much time it was spent on Facebook or Insta or just, you know, internet alone, right? Yeah, I'm on, I'm also, I think the most is Telegram and WhatsApp. So it's communication platform. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's me too. I mean, you know, I spend the most time on WhatsApp. But then, you know, you're probably more loyal than I am. So maybe you're holding your phone all the time and that's your one device. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Oh, you have many devices. Like that. So, so I'm cheating there because that three hours <laughs> is on my iPhone and then I've got a tablet. Well, of course, I don't bring that to work and then I've got my, you know, computer here and then there's this <laughs> <laughs> MacBook that I'm using because the camera is good. So, I mean, if you total that up, I don't know. I, I yeah, don't, probably I, also 10 hours of dumbbells. That's what you see, right? Exactly, yeah, of your eyes. <laughs> yeah. And my 10 hours is a constant, it's already a 13% drop from last week. Means last week was higher. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, I'm quite curious um, for our audience, can you, if you're using an iPhone now, can you go and check your screen time and leave it in the chat box? Then we'll just, uh, later I'll go and look at the comments. Just go and do it, okay? I think it'll be fun. can make it a contest, Hazel. Who has the shortest <laughs> or maybe who has the, uh, well, we shall not encourage digital eye strain here. <laughs> I just think it's fun. But okay, anyway, um, back to topic. Um, so there's a lot of, I think you mentioned blue light just now. Um, and there's a lot of talk on blue light on, and the effects on our eye health. Um, Dr. Han, what's your take on it, on blue light? Um, you know, well, blue light is part of the light spectrum that we see, you know, in our environment. And um, to cut it out completely, I think it's a little bit of an overkill. But if you're looking at the screen and the computer screen um, at night, um, because you know research has shown that it can, well, affect too much blue light can affect our sleep quality. I think you know towards the uh, end of the day, it's wise to reduce that. But um, you know to cut it out completely all the time is a little bit questionable. There's some research that show that. I mean, you know, you need some amount of blue light to lift your mood. So if you don't see blue light at all, you may get very depressed. Um, mm. And then there's some, you know, uh, other research, you know, in its infancy. So, you know, early research that shows that maybe you need a certain amount of near blue light. So the, the range of ultraviolet light uh, to stimulate uh, normal growth of children's eyeballs. Otherwise, they may get very short-sighted. So, um, you know, a lot of this is research-based. So, uh, you know, whether or not you, you know, buy it completely is questionable. But I think it's, it's a good practice to reduce blue light exposure, particularly at night. Yeah. Mm, okay, thank you, Dr. Han. And then another question is the difference between um, adults versus kids. Is there a difference between the eyes of adults and children? And does prolonged use of laptops uh, or mobile phones have a greater impact on, say, I don't know, children? Um, certainly. Well, children's eyes are still growing. And, um, you know, up to, well, we say age of 18, but sometimes it may be over the age of 18. So up to age of 18, their eyeballs are still, you know, developing and they may overshoot their development and become, you know, very large or long, you know, from front to back. And that will give rise to myopia and sometimes even 
high and extreme myopia, which can be very bad for the eyes. And, you know, high myopia can be associated with, you know, other serious, sometimes blinding eye diseases like glaucoma, retinal detachment, and even earlier cataract onset. So all that is not what we want in our children. So in particular, when they are, you know, still young, you know, especially when they are even very young, like, you know, below, say, five years old, six years old, you would really want to make sure that they don't spend too long on their digital devices and they get plenty of visual breaks, plenty of time outdoor to slow down their eye growth. And also, of course, if no choice, they have to be on the, you know, computer, make sure that you choose one that has a you know big enough monitor so that they can be sitting upright and not squinting, good enough lighting. If your room light is not uh, very controllable, you might want to have that built in in the screen or, of the monitor, uh, or even you know the latest uh, advancement in this uh, category is this you know screen bar that uh, BenQ had uh, you know very nicely uh, showed to me. And uh, I'm quite impressed because it's actually a little light that you can switch on. And uh, you see, and that is actually automated. As in, when, once you switch it on, there is a sensor to detect the ambient light underneath here. So it's a bit of a task light. You know, sometimes kids may be on their, you know, monitor, you know, you're tapping on the keypad, but they may have reference material. So this will be shining on that very nicely rather than coming from an overhead light or a, you know, a uh, so desk light that may leave a shadow. So this is really lovely, really good positioning. And what more for the adults, this light comes with the inbuilt sensor that can actually adjust the brightness. So I think, you know, both for kids and adults, this sort of, you know, new, you know, uh, your creation is very helpful. Uh, but even more so as a parent myself, you know, I constantly nag at my kids not to spend so much time on the tablets, uh, you know, much preferable that they're sitting up, yeah, you know, uh, either a laptop or yeah, a desktop, even better, bigger screen. <laughs> yes. I think um, with all the negative consequences that you explained to us regarding um, excessive screen time, I think it's fair to say that given that we are living in a digital age, it's also still very hard for us to completely avoid using computer. Like you mentioned, sometimes home-based learning, sometimes work from home, you definitely need to use um, your screen. So for example, at your clinic, Dr. Han, you use your computer to access your, I don't know, to access patient records or to reply emails. So um, do you, I can see that from the screen that you do take extra measures to take care of your eyes. Do you mind sharing with us um, your office setup, sort of like a quick office tour? Oh, and we can okay. talk about how you yeah. combat the different issues. Right. Okay. My office basically is an eye clinic. So um, I have, well, I have two screens and uh, one is a much older one on which I store a lot of photographs. Uh, the position is uh, not so adjustable, but this one, the new BenQ one, is very lovely. And um, I can actually adjust it uh, up and down very easily. So if I had spent too much time on my iPad the night before and I maybe come in with a bit of a tiny ache on my neck, I would love it that I can push this up to get to stretch my back a little. So this monitor is lovely, you know, in that respect. Um, hmm. But let's say I want to, you know, be able to be more comfortable, I can, you know, bring it down. And uh, my assistant, um, you know, uh, sometimes use this, uh, lab, uh, this uh, monitor too, to help me design pamphlets. So, you know, it can be adjusted to suit our height. So it's, um, you know, lovely. So many uh, different individuals can share the monitor and adjust it very simply according to their height. So, and uh, apart from that, what else can I say? Um, the lighting in my room, um, it's a lovely location right now. I'm not sure if I will stay here for very long because my clinic name, well, we, we enjoy it here. But as you can see outdoor right now is the view of Orchard Road. You can see, I don't know whether you can see that. Uh, can you see? Can you see? Uh, I can see, I can see a bit. 
you can see maybe you can see a bit of the <laughs> yeah the lovely orchard road right there and yeah and yeah so the lighting is nice and dark right now but yeah. during the day it can be quite bright and uh we get quite a you know uh, enough sun from there and um this uh, particular monitor helps um well for this sort of situation as well because it comes with an inbuilt sensor and um, it can detect the ambient light and mm. when the light is too bright you know it will brighten slightly whereas when the light is too dim it will then change let's say you can see a little icon here I don't know. can you see the icon hazel mm, it's a bit blur can't really see so anyway, took... yeah there is an eye icon that you oh, I see so yeah. yeah, so that little icon tells me that it's registering the ambient light and adjusting it accordingly. So uh, sometimes I need to work in the dark. So I have a you know blind here that I will lower. Yeah, you, you know I, I you know uh, kind of elevated. I lifted it just now. But when I'm checking my patient's retina, so back of the eye, I need to be in a pretty dark environment so that I can. Um, you know, well, examine properly and, you know, be able to see the fine details at the back of the eye. And, um, you know, for that, um, you know, sometimes switching and all that, sometimes my assistant will be here helping me. So they may need to have some light uh, while I'm working in the dark. So this, uh, you know, sort of setup in the auto adjustment of the, you know, uh, monitor light is perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Dr. Han, for the very um, nice office tour. I think your view is very good here. Yeah. This is the other side, so this is the street <laughs> lamp, and I'll give you a 360 degree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. But anyway, it's actually, um, let's see the time. It's 7.48 already. We have a lot of questions from our audience. So, and um, I check, I'm checking the chat box. Um, and Antipas, Antipas, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, he said that there's this software called Rescue Time that you can install in your PC that can track your usage. So not yeah, only can yeah. you track on your phone, you can also track on your on your yeah. laptop. So yes, that's yeah. good. And yeah. then another question. Thanks for sharing. Another question from um FH2. This one is to Dr. Han. Do supplements contain um lutein? Um, help to improve our eyesight and reduce aging of our eyes? Mm, yes, um, well lutein and, and there's another pigment called zeaxanthin are uh, very good for prevention against age-related macular degeneration and age-related macular degeneration as the name implies usually affect people above about 40-50 upwards yeah so the elderly get it more and taking this had been proven to reduce the risk of getting the damages to the macular back of eye that can come with this particular disease. And they are actually, these pigments are available in dark pigmented uh, vegetables, food items, fruits, for instance. And I always like to tell my patients to take more blueberries and papaya. So if you want, you know, imported fruits, there will be blueberries highest concentration and then, uh, you know, local uh, papayas and even the wolf berries, the goji that you, you know, cook with, uh, you know, Chinese medicine soups and stuff. Yeah, so those have a very high content. But if you can't be eating so much of these things all the time, yes, supplement is helpful. We have one too in our clinic uh, and that is the one that is used in the research that studied all these pigments and their benefit for age-related macular degeneration. That research is called the ARET study. And um, yeah, the tablet that we're carrying right now is by Bosch and Lom, quite good. But uh, similar ones you can find uh, over the counter as well. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Han. So let me see what other questions we have. Oh, Amaya, Amaya said that his screen time is seven hours because uh, he does online shop shopping, he, she. So still help me. Mine is 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be helped, you know, it's so convenient. I do it too. <laughs> okay, I'm going into our Zoom again. We have a lot of questions. So the next question is from an anonymous, um, from, let's see, anonymous attendee. So uh, the person asked, why are our eyes always red when reading from a computer screen? 
Hmm. You must be suffering from digital eye strain. Yeah. So why are your eyes red? When your eyes are red, it means that it is either dry, inflamed or infected. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, make sure to get your eyes checked. Uh, make sure to at least try to blink more. Train yourself. So blink training is a thing. Remember I said earlier, train yourself. If you can't come look for me, I will help to train you to blink by showing you how you're blinking because the machine, my device, Lippy View, it actually records. It's like a little mini video recorder that you know records your blinking behavior and tells you how frequently you're blinking and how completely you're blinking. And a lot of people are only blinking halfway. So I suspect that is the most likely reason why your eyes are always red. They are dry because you're not blinking completely. Yeah. Mm, okay, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Anonymous attendee. So the next question is, um, is it bad for our eyes if we watch TV with the lights off? Mm, kind of, yes. Yeah, depends on how old you are. So, you know, we kind of have to, yeah, throw the question back at the yeah, person who asked this. For mm. the younger ones, it's probably more just discomfort. So if you're, you know, reading or looking at the phone in a very dark environment, the light that's coming from your phone, hopefully isn't going to be too bright. If it is too bright, you need to adjust it to make it a little bit dimmer. Otherwise, you know, that amount of light in a dark environment is going to cause your eyes to be uh, stressed or you know get digital eye strain so if you're young that's all just the digital eye strain that I would be worried about but if you are older let's say if you are close to 60 there's another condition that I worry about for my older patients when they are reading in the dark and that is getting a glaucoma attack particularly if they are not short-sighted if they're not short-sighted it means that their eyeballs are not big on the contrary, they may be small. And when they are small, as they get older, the lens in their eyes become larger. They grow. They never stop growing the lens in our eyes. When you eat a fish, eh, the fish eyes, some, you know, well, white patches inside, that's usually the lens, okay? So this lens grows and expands and swell up as you get older. And in the dark, when your you know eyeballs are straining and focusing your your ciliary muscle remember the dumbbell carrying muscle in your eyes they're working harder harder to focus near in that sort of environment and you know darker environment your pupil will also become larger your pupils are larger in the dark all that in combination will push your eye possibly into a condition called glaucoma attack it's like getting a heart attack but it's in the eye and with that, your eye, the pressure in the eye shoots up. It can be sky high. Normal is 21 and below. When you get a glaucoma attack, it can go up to 50, 60, blah, blah. And it's very painful. You may risk losing your sight permanently after that. There is a risk of that. So hmm. if you're older, do not read in the dark, please. Hmm. Particularly if you're 60, 70, you know, yeah. Try not to. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. So, a lot of nagging, sorry. <laughs> It's good nagging. It's a good health message. So it's okay. Yeah. We have another question from um, Kina. So Kina asks, is taking eye slash vision supplements like fish oil, um, black moors, lutein vision or occupied actually shown to scientifically reduce vision problems, example myopia, or are, or are they just for cataract risk reduction? Mm, actually, none. Not for myopia, neither for cataract. So these supplements are for dry eyes and age-related macular degeneration. So um, they are definitely helpful to prevent eye diseases, but not the eye diseases that you mentioned. Okay, The supplements help to reduce dry eye symptoms. So that's the fish oil. So mm. oil to reduce dryness. That's kind of, you know, quite easy to remember. And then the lutein zeaxanthin is for back of the eye, aging change, aging change. So if you're only like 17, 18, and you're trying to overdose yourself with lutein and zeaxanthin, I'll advise you, you know, save your money, you know, keep that money till when you're like 
40, 50 and above, and then start taking the lutein's zeaxanthin. then. It'll be, yeah, a little bit, you know, smarter financially. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Han. I hope that answers your question. So let's see, we have a lot more questions to answer. Um, another question is, oh, this is uh, built on from the previous question. So does this mean that going to the cinema is actually bad for our eyes? Because in the cinema, you are watching the TV in the dark, right? Do you feel it's bad for our eyes? Your viewing distance is different, remember? You know, we're talking about digital eye strain. Digital eye strain basically uh, referring to symptoms or problems that come about because you're looking at devices pretty close to you, pretty mm. close to you. Handphone at 30 cm sometimes, 40 cm, you know, maximum. So in computer distance, this is maximum about 50. Maybe if you're standing behind someone, it can be up to about 60 centimeters. So these are near distances. At the most, there are so-called intermediate distances, all right? Near distances, doing work at near distances in the dark has got certain amount of risk involved because of the, you know, uh, well, focusing muscle overworking, all right? Because when you're focusing near, your eye muscles need to carry those dumbbells. When you're focusing far, that's movie, yeah? watching a movie, that's far, you know, if, even if you are sitting at the first row, that viewing distance is still going to be at least, you know, a couple of meters, right? Yeah, it's not going to be like 60 centimeter, okay? So that sort of distance, uh, you know, you are not carrying those dumbbells in your eye as much. Not, mm. you know, not at all in comparison to what you're doing for near distances, right? That's true. It's the distance that is the pro problem. Okay, we're going to go into another question. Um, this time we answered already. So I think you answered is what's the optimal distance between the eyes and the computer monitor? Um, okay, depends on what you are doing and depends on what your eye power is. But the best will be at least about 50 centimeter. I, well, I kind of never quite measure my arm length, but I think mm. it's yeah, around about that. Yeah. Mm. So 40, 40 to 50 cm. Yeah. If you are short sighted, if you are short sighted, chances are, and, and if you're not fully corrected, you may need to go a bit nearer. And uh, if you're nearer, then of course, you know, the brightness level, the font size, and all that, that is going to be different. Uh, compared to if you are a little bit, uh, you know, further from the monitor. So mm -hmm. if you are not having your eye power properly corrected, either with spectacles or more permanently with the laser surgeries, etc., then mm -hmm. chances are you're going to have to be at a slightly different distance from the perfect situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Han. Let's see what other questions we have. Um, any advice, any advice on floaters? Um, floaters generally arise, um, well, in the back of our eye, in this part of the eye called the vitreous gel. And, um, there's not a lot you can do to prevent it. Um, it's due to degeneration of the collagen tissue, you know, all this connective tissue in the jelly body of the eye. And uh, unfortunately, no amount of collagen injection, collagen supplement is going to help, help it that much. Um, basically, if it is something that is new, if you're getting new floaters, make sure to check it out to make sure that it's not, uh, you know, well, associated with, with potential major problems like a tear in the retina or even retinal detachment. If it is something that is pretty old, yeah, if, if you've had the, you know, floaters for years and years, uh, and if you can live with them, then just, you know, live with them. If you can't live with them, there are new treatment, there's a new treatment that uses laser, but the laser kind of, uh, you know, disperse the big floater, kind of breaks it down into smaller floaters uh, with the hope that you won't notice it so much. It's got its pros and cons, there's a little bit of risk involved in everything. And this one, um, again, it has got some risk. So if you are, you know, very, very troubled by your floaters, you can, you know, come for a checkup to see what can be done, but make sure that you understand what you're, you know, you're, you know, 
getting uh, for the treatment. Okay, thank you, Dr. Han. I hope that answers your question. So it's coming, it's already 8 o'clock, so I'm going to take one last question. So I, I was looking at the different questions that we have left, and um, one question that came up multiple times is on blue light. I know we covered it um, briefly during uh, the, the webinar. So the person asked, um, do spectacle lenses, screen filter, monitor, and TV with blue light protection actually help? Yeah, um, that's what uh, we were trying to say. The yeah. evidence, yeah, is still basically, you know, out there. It's not very confirmatory whether they really help to protect our eyes from blue light damage. So what is known is that, you know, um, all this problem at the back of our eyes, age-related macular degeneration, also the front part of the eye, the cataracts, may in some, you know, uh, well, to a degree be caused by too much ultraviolet light, which is kind of related to blue light. And, um, you know, particularly the back of the eye, like age-related macular degeneration. Uh. So that is why uh, some, you know, um, well, well, parties, some people, or, you know, research scientists and you know, corporates, uh, you know, the, the uh, companies who create all these uh, lens implants, etc., like to protect against blue light. But then there's the opposite camp that says that you need a certain amount of blue light to help to lift your mood and also perhaps to even stimulate proper, you know, and control growth in the children's eyes to prevent too much myopia. So, you know, how much is much, you know, how much control do you need for the blue light, you know, is what uh, is probably a, you know, better question to ask. We don't really know what is the situation. Uh, we know that it may affect your sleep. So, you know, it's good to cut it out, you know, if you can at night before you go to bed. Um, you know, many smartphones have a night filter on it and that is to cut out blue light. So when you click on it, your screen becomes a little bit yellower. I have that on this, you know, thank you uh, monitor as well. You know, it's kind of cool. I quite like it. And uh, yeah, there you go. See, if I switch on the night light, uh, it becomes a little bit yellower. I don't think you can see it there. Mm, but it does. It. Trust me. Yeah. So if it's a white background, you can see it better. So, hmm. you know, um, yeah, at least, you know, from maybe 7, 8 p.m. onwards, I would say, yes, protect yourself against blue light so that you can have a good night's sleep and your family, your partner can have a good night's sleep as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just you. Remember, you've got a whole family, I'm sure, you know, most of us do, you know, uh, living yeah, close to yeah. us. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I have, I have one more interesting question. Is sunlight good for the eyes? Sunlight is, you know, in general, is bad for the eyes. In general, oh. it's bad for that because it's ultraviolet light. Right. Yeah. yeah, ultraviolet light can cause burns if you're staring at the sun, especially let's say if it's an eclipse, solar eclipse or, you know, such situation. Do not, you know, stare at the sun because it can cause burns to your cornea. It can even cause burns to your retina. There are people who stare at the, you know, sun during such situations because they think that, you know, it's being eclipsed and therefore, you know, not so much to worry about. But mm. even that can cause a burn. So what more normal sun, if you stay yeah. too much, you can get problems. So no, sunlight is not good for the eyes, but mm. sunlight is good for your body. Because of course, you know, sunlight, if you're thinking of wrinkles and all that, Sunlight is very, very bad, you know. <laughs> we don't like getting wrinkles, do we? So yeah, your sun is bad for that. But sunlight gives you vitamin D, free vitamin D. Your skin needs sunlight to produce vitamin D, which is necessary for general health, for your bones. And now they're saying it's even necessary to prevent catching COVID-19. Oh my, covid yes. Yes, you need vitamin D to fight against germs, including COVID-19. So those who are not having enough vitamin D run the risk of catching COVID-19 more than those who have enough vitamin D. So you need sunlight, but wear your sunglasses 
uh, if you don't like wrinkles on your face, wear a white brim hat, hold your umbrellas. If you're, you know, I, I don't, I don't generally hold an umbrella, but if you don't mind, just hold an umbrella <laughs> for your face. But stretch your arms out if you like, or your legs to get some vitamin D there. Yeah. Okay. It's, good. it's even good for dry eyes. Can you imagine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D is good for dry eyes prevent dry eyes. Hmm. Okay, thank you Dr. Han and with that I'm going to wrap up our webinar as well as our Q&A section. I know that there are still like a lot of questions that we have not answered. Thank you so much for the huge engagement in this uh, webinar. Please leave your questions that you have in our Q&A platform um, in our, on our website drextentis.com. So anyway, if you are struggling with any eye health problems as a result of, I don't know, excessive screen time or dry eyes, do book an appointment with Dr. Daphne via her clinic, um, Singapore Medical Specialist, or via our website, drextentis.com. I'm sure um, Dr. Daphne will be able to help you. So like I mentioned at the start of the webinar, we have an exciting lucky draw where you can win a BenQ eye care monitor worth $269 when you complete a survey today. Um, and after listening to the entire webinar, I'm sure we understand the importance of investing in quality technology that takes into account your eye health. So um, the BenQ eye care monitor is perfect for this. And um, on top of that, completing the survey will automatically allow you to claim a complimentary Lazada discount voucher. So once again, the link is in the chat box. I've already left it there on top, I think. So do complete it to uh, enter the lucky draw as well as redeem your Lazada discount voucher. So next, I would like to sincerely thank um, Dr. Daphne for taking the time today to share uh, your insights with us. Dr. Daphne, thank you so much for your medical expertise today. I had a well, lot of fun. Fun, yeah. <laughs> you too, yeah. Goodbye. And thank you. <laughs> and thank you, BenQ, for partnering with us um, in this webinar and spreading the importance of proper um, eye care habits. It's really something that none of us should take for granted, our vision. So for our audience, thank you so much for taking part in today's webinar. You guys have been a wonderful audience. As I mentioned at the start of the webinar, this session is recorded. You will be able to find the recording in our Facebook page, Dr. Extentis. So stay tuned for our post-webinar EDM where you will find the link to the, um, um, to the webinar as well as other relevant articles related to eye health. So if you have any more questions, like I said, you can always um, drop them in our, our website, drextentis.com. And on behalf of everyone at Dr. Extentis, it's been our pleasure to have you. Thank you, Dr. Han. Um, thank you, everybody. So good night. Good evening. Good night. Bye-bye, <laughs> okay. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.